okay, so yeah, the IBC will try as much as to get as much as we can um, and see how much ground we can cover for a lot of things that we have to do. So let's go check a couple of things out. So yeah, so we dive into the hole straight away. Um, first, there was the Lupo Super Panel. I got to see the Lupo Ultra Panel Pro with their full color 30, which was interesting. And there was like also the full color 60, which is like the one by two panel. And it was interesting that the output of those panels were comparable to the native output of the new released um, Sky Panel X. But without the, the only difference that we got was that the Sky Panel X had the additional um, enhancer, which actually turned the soft light to a very hard source that could actually go far. That was at that period, it's only at that point that the Sky Panel X like outperformed the Lupo Super Panel. Um, there was um, also the Aladdin um, balloon light and that was interesting but it was not too interesting because there are other materials I mean there are other manufacturers who actually also had this technology like pipe light and I mean, light star also had like balloon light technology then we had a very interesting um, vendor which was like black lighting console that actually um, democratized CRMX across different brands without actually using a specific um, gateway um, it, it was actually software sold on an iPad and it actually spoke to like a router or a controller that could actually like speak to every light and make them programmable giving each of them I, I believe they sold it via universes and each universes had the ability to program a sky panel with its full DMX capabilities for about 25 units of this kind of um, fixtures um, there was lights that they were um, showing their 2500 watt with a 25 degree beam and it was actually um, kept in a 4 array grid and that was very interesting because um, it had like this glass lens system that actually had focus through and put together in the 4 array grid I could see what the possibilities were but there were no photometrics for me to actually um, understand much of the value in terms of to compare it to regular fixtures or what it can compare to. They also had like 9 degrees um, barrel lenses that was also available um, for their fixtures and their units. So I guess that's like a new system. We'll probably get to see more when they put out more information. And I think they're very popular in the Europe region. Maybe not in America, but in the Europe region. Um, Past that, we actually got to see nine solutions and checked out the grip solutions and the C pan unit, which was actually quite interesting for tabletop. And the current C pan that I actually um, um, captured in this video, apart from like the grip solutions that are available, also could handle like payloads up to um, 5.5 kilograms. That's somewhere like a an also G2 with like a Canon CNE and your VLOC battery, and can actually, if proper counterbalance. You could use it for like your product shots and some other things. So um, then there was a diesel film um, that we went to the diesel booth and we checked out a couple. Saw the Pavel, which actually is a super 35 anamorphic that is that covers full frame with vignetting, and it was interesting. I had I, I had like a couple of experiences and I found some of it pretty interesting from what I saw. And we did get to see the Genesis, the other range of lenses that existed, the Tangos, which were quite heavy. And there were like a couple of more um, um, lenses I got, I got to see on trial for the fun. Um, I was really impressed with the, um, the Dizio um, um, Retro. It didn't feel in person, nothing jumped out at me. Then we went to the DJI booth for a bit, checked out the transmission system. Then there was like the Athena company, which was from Nisi. Um, checked out their lenses, their combination with the Ronin 40, and so many other things that um, was listed on in terms of like adapters, like using like PLDLs adapters to be able to get on 40. It was like a corporate system. Then I, it was interestingly, I got to like um, run a, into the digital photo. Pro Cine Steadicam. I gotta try it out. It was interesting, surprising. The amp can actually support about 35 kg, that's about 70 pounds. And that was like a fun surprise. The sled, everything was not a lot more standard than the Pro Cine X. Then I got to try out the Ari Trinity. Now, <laughs> now word of question um, the rig is quite heavy. 
you have to have balanced feet because in a steady cam mode the weight is usually towards you but approaching the Irish Trinity it keeps the weight in the javelin mode away from you so it could be you could run into situations whereby you're being pulled by the weight and if you're not careful you could lose your balance if you don't have like great feet you can feel like a steady cam operator you will know this but you would really feel the weight transferring the Trinity can take up to the Alexa 65 but I think it's where you ask yourself what can you do, what can you take and how can you perform and something interesting is that all the rules of Steadicam um, goes out the window when you know you have your normal Steadicam, you are using gravity to balance, you control your movement, you control your breathing but the Iron Trinity has a gimbal head that actually levels the horizon takes care of um, the balancing so it's almost like a gimbal and all you just focus is the grip and how you actually use it and how you actually can move if you even get to like when you get to work right you have like your button controls that allows you to like um, do rolls do tilts and do pants independently so you can actually do that and have like a work session where you're actually going into like you can go through spaces you can go through people you could actually do a lot so even when you actually get to like use it in javelin mode and flip the camera actually like look back and try to do a done one it actually just goes seamlessly without thinking of it everything just cuts 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 very seamlessly so it's quite interesting to actually see that um that was actually um possible like using the rig so it actually opens a couple of possible interesting possibilities but that not said it is quite heavy what i mean quite heavy quite heavy if i was supposed to compare it I would say um, a 240 watt battery on an Amira that is balanced in a steady cam that has two more 240 watt battery and a third battery, right? That's like the weight range um, I believe the, the Trinity is. So you should be prepared for that kind of weight. You can. That's not to say anybody can carry it because the lady who was um, um, beside me was also a goofy operator and she also operated the Trinity. So there's also the getting used to it and maybe wearing for the first time just being shocked by the amount of weight after after the trinity we stopped at i stopped by techno cranes boot the techno 22 and also like the techno 17 and super techno 45 and we had like a conversation with um understanding their process and a lot of things that they do which was quite interesting interestingly i stopped by godox boot and they actually just released the 2400 buy which is actually a 2600 a watt pulling fixture that is constant throughout the range of um, tongues into daylight putting out constant power and that was very interesting they do not have a price for it yet it's actually comparable to like a 4k power and it's mind numbing that um, these cogs are just getting bigger and stronger and you can take like the spot fixtures you can take those uh, hyper um, intensifiers that could actually um, 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 intensify the output of the beam so it's just interesting how um, things are growing pretty fast it's very interesting and that is more specific because of the technology and how you could use like battery power solutions to be able to like get a lot out of it you get um, Felix had like a 2400 watt battery that could actually um, run that unit for like an hour so if you're like working at 50% maybe you get 2 hours of it out of it if you work with 50% just intensify it will like get more punch out of it it's interesting Godos also had like a um, new prototype um, CRLS reflector system that had like divisions from like 1 to 4 that you could use just like um, CRLS from um, from, um, this, from Lightbridge a company actually also make it so it was interesting they had like a full kit um, some of the pitfalls that um, well, most people are talking about in CRLS, which is like the clamps that are like plastic that break, they fixed it in the ass and made the ass aluminum. You showed the prototype. Um, I didn't get to test the diffusion, but from what I saw, I think it's quite interesting. Maybe it's still, it, it looks a little bit rough around the edges, but there's a lot of um, interesting um, potential. So I, I, I do not know if, if there's like a patent or whatever, but. Clearly, they can actually compete in that space and be able to like um, introduce um, that kind of um, material into the industry in terms of, and they could like run from um, the seven inch to like a uh, hundred by hundred, or even custom size compared to your orders. So after that, we did get to check out the nine thousand dollar director viewfinder, which is quite cool and quite interesting. 
which can also like be adapted to PL and EF. That also happened and we saw cheap lenses that had like close focus of for like 10 inches. They are like lenses that you could use for like um, macro close focus. And this was also interesting to quickly look at. Then we quickly stopped by non light boot, which had like the regulars, um, the four light kits and the um, other regulars that existed in the non lux line. Um, after that, there was pipe light, which was like um, the sister to the Aladdin balloon light that actually existed, that I came across at the beginning of the show. And they demoed their own um, um, inflatable lights and how light it was to rig like an 8x8, to rig like a 12x12 wall, which we saw. There was like the 1x4, there was like 2x4. And these were interesting because of the applications you could use them, how light they were and easy and safe. You could actually like rig them to several solutions. Um, it was interesting to see the quality of light and how rapid it is. And it looks like it had like zones when you looked at them, when you programmed them with DMX because they had like different channels and each channel is like a hundred watts. So if you can count um, um, the, the ripple lights on the balloon, you could probably almost guess how many watts each light source is. And it does have like the entire cloud fixture too that also um, you could use in um, bringing in soft diffuse, diffusion into the room. So that was actually like interesting to actually see and actually know. Um, then we went to Anshu Nudex, which and they actually showed their optical system that they could take apart, replace, customize, even change the iris. And interestingly, um, they had a different approach of using spherical glass to actually achieve oval bokeh, which is different from the patent system that the Hawks have. You could actually um, install internal diffusions into your glass and you could do it like um, on your workbench um, in a clean environment, but maybe not in the field, but in a clean environment. You could introduce like diffusion field into the lens. You can introduce um, micro contractibility. You can change the iris shape from like a normal um, iris to like a triangular iris to be able to give you like a triangular bokeh and you can also introduce like um, they have like a rare filtration system which you can also put more interesting filters like streaks um, ultra contrast or even clear glass so that was that and we also spoke like some of the veterans who was speaking from the um explain his perspective of, of the lens while um, the engineer also um, was actually tearing apart the lens showing us how easy it was to be able to like, take it apart and actually run or customize things a lot to your specification. I guess most of the expense of the lens comes from the fact that it has been designed in such a way that um, anybody who's interested enough and bold enough would be able to like take advantage and actually customize um, um, the glass into something that is a lot more fun and that could actually like work and also the value that a lens carrier as opposed to a camera would that actually loses its value every three years so those kind of conversations happen for a bit and it was interesting to hear other perspectives of professional in the industry then we actually have grip munich factory gfm um, we saw their dollies and their um, lightweight cranes which is um, quite interesting and the dollar was rated to be able to like pick up about um, 250 kgs so that's like a single operator a camera and some more and it could actually get really super compact because it's actually a tall color dolly so it was quite interesting to see some of these things and how they work and you could actually program your speed it is remotable you could do repeatable moves and stuff like that that was actually interesting then there was um, a, a company called, I think it's called Rocky, I, I forget the name, but they actually created a shoulder rig that allows you to like, plug in your RS3 Pro, which can carry up to like a C70 and probably a CNE lens on it. I think this is the it was interesting. This is the first iteration. I can see how this would be great for people who do reality TV work and how um, it, would, it would actually work for them. So we actually got to, like, I tried it out for a bit and a friend of mine, we just got to like experience it. It's, I, think, I think it still needs to be like cleaned up because there's so much um, jerry rigging that's happening that um, I feel um, it's still like in the first iteration. Maybe on version two when it's a lot more mature, there's a lot of streamlining that would actually happen when that happens. So um, after that, I went to Flanders Scientific Book, then also Canon's Boot, and we explored the DPV um, 2720 that had like um, a contrast ratio um, of like 200,000 to one, and the other DPV 31 um, series had like a contrast ratio of 1 million to one. Then I briefly dived into um, 
um, the virtual production kennel is offering and how they were using their Cineflex zooms to like take the lens data into the lens and actually send like the focus, the iris, the zoom information to actually match what Orion and she was doing. That was quite like an interesting conversation to see how that played out. And by the time I was done, they got really got fast from me <laughs> and it was actually ended. So today, um, today is day two. Um, I'll go about Canon's foot and get like check out a lot more things and hopefully we'll be able to like have more fun and see what can happen. Okay, so that's like day one IPC and on the next time I see you, improvise, adapt and overcome. Cool. It's been a fun experience talking to most of these manufacturers, learning your perspective, learning certain applications and yeah, it's been amazing so far.